Um, good morning, Jean. Um, well, we are right at guidance as far as uh, our net income forecasts are concerned. Um, and as far as Rocket is concerned, um, we are, uh, we've invested in Rocket for the business synergies primarily, and uh, we're continuing to realize that and wanted to continue to leverage that into our digital pivot. Uh, as far as our holdings in Rocket, uh, we, we've made that bet, and it's a long-term bet, and uh, we will continue to be, uh, uh, be working with Rocket in terms of realizing um, you know, the, the, the core of the investment thesis for that uh, particular investment. Now, the digital pivot seemed to be uh, taking too long and maybe a little too painful for investors. So how long do we have to wait? Well, let, let's, let, let's put this in context. I think uh, you, you really do uh, enable change when you start taking very, very strong actions to it. So if you remember last quarter we talked, uh, we gave a guidance of a lowered EBITDA and EBIT target, and that's primarily to buy us headroom for our digital pivot. And what I could say to, to you and to our investors is that in Q1, we've taken a very, very bold step uh, into it and really making sure that the pivot uh, will happen and it's happening in an impactful way. Uh, a, a significant portion of our report in Q1 is this really three-pronged strategy starting with a significant growth in CapEx for digital infrastructure network, uh, which is growing. You look at it as a fourfold increase uh, if you compare it to Q1 uh, last quarter, so it tells you how serious we are in the digital pivot. It starts with network. It's followed by propagation of smartphone and web-connected devices. And very quickly, we're going to move into content and services, which not only will increase our expected ARPU uh, within the telco, but really to change the dimension of PLDT beyond just the telco and really get into this high-volume, uh, high-opportunity uh, uh, services in digital that is beyond voice and data and calling. But in the meantime, you're losing subscribers, another 500,000 just this last quarter. How do you address that? Well, we are, but uh, the good news in that story is that it's, it's decelerating quite aggressively. I think we have a, a very motivated team in a consumer group lead by uh, Ariel Fermin that's really you know, fighting the battle day to day in regaining uh, the confidence of our subscribers. And that, again, starts with a very good network, which we think we have already achieved now, and we're not quite happy yet with what we have delivered, and we're continuing to grow. And again, the 4x increase in CapEx uh, is a good uh, example of that, and that's what we, have, what we have done this quarter, and we're going to be relentless in the pursuit of, of customer experience for, for our subscribers. And that's our formula to regaining them, simply giving them better service. And competition is heating up. There's talks of Telenor and San Miguel coming together for, for a new telco. And so is PLD still well poised given that it's pouring in a lot of CapEx and yet it's the profit and revenue is just not matching? Well, I think that the reason why I could tell you that PLD is well poised and we're very confident and optimistic about this is that we are now willing to pour in the investment to win. And so uh, this uh, investments that we're putting in CapEx is deliberate. You know, we wanted to reduce our profits to invest in our future, and we are. Uh, again, fourfold increase in CapEx, significant growth in seeding uh, digital devices to our end users, and then you'll, you'll see shortly an aggressive uh, diversification of services uh, into the digital arena. So beyond calling and texting and data services, uh, we're, you're also going to see with, uh, from us an aggressive push into fin fintech, for instance, led by our Voyager division, who's you know, a dominant player now in financial services. And very soon, you're going to see us really leverage the synergy between our business groups, uh, which has continuously uh, been growing through the years, and our consumer groups to really form this um, uh, alignment between B2C, B2B, and delivering what, what we would uh, call within PLDT the total digital package which is a B2B to B2C to uh, ecosystem. So we're quarter one of a three-year plan. And uh, what I could share with you is that, A, we're pleased with what we have accomplished, and B, the intent and the aggressiveness to win in this space uh, is there, and it's fueled by our, our you know, CEO and chairman. But there also seems to be a change in strategy because um, Manny Palinan mentioned that he was willing to talk with San Miguel about the 700 megahertz spectrum. So who's going to make the first move? And is this a raising the white flag and questioning them holding that spectrum? It's not raising the white flag at all. 
uh, it's really focusing to the consumers, right? The 700 megahertz spectrum will allow us to deliver higher density, lower cost internet to the, to the Philippines. And I think it's a common goal of all the players in this industry. And that's the whole idea and that's the whole reason why we wanted to have talks. It's by no means a waving of a white flag nor even an indication of it. We don't even know who we're competing against yet at this point. But we are one in this goal, right? We wanted lower cost of internet. We needed a spectrum to do that. And we wanted to bring that benefit to the rest of the country. So does that mean you'll be making the first move, approaching San Miguel? If that's what it takes, we would. But certainly that's uh, for our CEO and chairman uh, to call. But again, I want to underscore this. We're going to do those moves uh, under the context of really trying to improve customer experience for subscriber based of PLDT. So we have a bigger stake in this, right? We have subscribers. You know, people with Spectrum and no subscribers, you know, should share. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Winston DeMarillo from the Bloomberg Manila Bureau.